Hi everyone, Kyle Demas here from Open Alex. I'm here to give a walkthrough of the new user interface. Today is January 21st, 2024. And I say that because we're adding new improvements and enhancements to the user interface every week. So if you're looking at this in a couple of weeks and you see something slightly different or that's been added since then, that's uh, that's why there's a difference. And I will be updating these videos as regularly as I can. So the first thing to say is from any computer around the world, you can go to openalex.org. That's because we are completely open and free and you don't need to have an institutional subscription to be able to access this data. So go to openalex.org and you'll get what you're seeing right here, which is a search box to start searching through the data. But before I do that, I wanna point out a couple of things. If you scroll down to the bottom, you can find more information about OpenAlex about our research, the nonprofit that's created it, um, and how you can access and use the data in other ways. So all that information is there at the bottom. And at the top right, I wanna also point out this question mark. You can click this and at any time, you can see there's a user manual and API references, but you can also contact us. And when you click that, it's gonna pop up a web form that you're seeing here. You can email us with anything you find. So maybe there's something you love about OpenAlex and you just wanna let us know. Maybe there's something that isn't in here yet that you'd love to see, or you found an error in the data. Please use this form. You can also send us an email to support at openalex.org. But please get in touch because all of the enhancements we make to the database are based on the feedback that we're getting from folks. Okay, getting right into it. Uh, you can see from openalex.org, you can just start searching immediately. Now, this search box is kind of magic. You can search individual words through the text of documents that are indexed in OpenAlex, but you can also search particular filters. And what I mean by that is, let's say you have an author, like Tim Berners-Lee is an example here. You could search that name through all of the full text, or you can search that author profile. So if I did that for myself, you'll notice I type in Kyle Demas. There's two options popping up. One is search Kyle Demas throughout the title, abstract, and text of works. And the other is to search that author profile. And this works also with institutions. So let's say I wanna look at University of South Florida. This is my alma mater. Um, you can see there's an institution filter that I can click here. There's several campuses, so I could click and look at either of those individually, or also publications that have been funded by University of South Florida, or I could search it throughout the um, title, abstract, and text. For now, I'm going to start with the filter. I click that and it brings me to the user interface. And no matter what you click at the beginning, it's going to look kind of like this. And at the top, you'll see here, you've got that search bar. So you can add additional searches that way. You've got the filters that are currently applied and the ability to add more. And I'll go into that in a moment. But under that, you've got these sort of two sections. The first is all of the works. So you can see there's 95,000 works that were uh, indexed in OpenAlex with an author from the University of South Florida. Right now they're sorted by citation count, but you could click that and sort by title, year, and a few other metadata fields. But typically these are the ones folks are looking for. For any of these, you can click on one of these publications or one of these works to find more information about that. So this publication has been um, very highly cited. You can see it's got eight more than 8,000 citations and how that's changed over time. You can find the abstract here to read more about that. You could click on either of these authors. And there's also a link to a PDF when it's available and also the, the landing page if it's not open. So I'm going to go back for now. That's how you find the individual works associated, but you can also using this button at the top right, click and download a CSV or a web of science format .txt file where you have one row essentially is, is the work and then metadata about that work as columns for the CSV. So you can do that with up to 100,000 works at a time from the user interface. If you do need more than that, you can break up the query uh, or you can use some of the other ways of, of getting uh, more data, higher volume data from, from us like APIs of the data snapshot. The next part over here on the right is the report, is what we're calling this. So we've got four analyses that we think people look at very regularly. So we've done this search of all the publications from the University of South Florida. I wanna know how the trends of time, um, how is that changing over time? When did they start publishing and how quickly is that going up? I wanna know what percentage of the works are open access. I wanna know what other institutions they're collaborating with on these publications. 
and I want to know what type of works they're producing. And you'll see most of them are journal articles or conference proceeding articles as well, but also book chapters, other data sets, so two different types of scholarly outputs. These are the four most common, so they're the default, but you can see here using the plus button, you can add any of the other metadata fields that you want to do analysis by. So some of the other ones that, that people look at is, for instance, author. So you could click author here, and it's going to bring up the top authors from the University of South Florida. Uh, but you could also, for instance, a lot of institutions are looking at topics and concepts, and you can look at the, the sources, but um, maybe for now we'll do sustainable development goals. And now it's bringing up all of the contributions to each of the sustainable development goals for the University of South Florida. Now, the way this is meant to work is give you a few of the, the top ones, but then if you click in here, you can export. Um, you can export this analysis, or you can view it in the API, or you can export the entirety of all of these. So if I were to click here on this report at the top and export all as a CSV, it's now going to create a CSV file that it's downloading in the background. You can see it's already downloaded, so I'll go ahead and click that that has each of these six analyses in it. So you can see here the publication year one, uh, the open access, true or false, the, the institutions. So all of that information is downloaded so you can uh, do other analyses outside of open analysis if you want, or um, you can save it for, for other purposes. But these filters can also, or these analyses in the report can also act as a way of finding filters. So let's say for the sustainable development goals, you wanted to know we're in the University of South Florida, life below water. Uh, this is, I'm a marine ecologist, so this is a field that I work in as well. If I click life below water on under here, you can see it's updated the filters that are applied to this query, and it's changed all of these analyses as well. So now you can see the different authors, they all work in marine ecology. Um, different set of institutions are collaborating with on these specific topics, et cetera. And the really cool part about Open Alex that I want to make sure to highlight is that as you make changes in here, you'll see that the, um, the URL has been updating. So now we have authorship institution, um, and it's got the University of South Florida as identifier. The next one is the Sustainable Development Goal ID, and it's got the, the room for life below water. So anyone can copy and paste this and it will send the exact same thing to them. And this is really important to us about being open and transparent and, and repeatable. So not only could someone in the library develop a really complex query and then send it to a researcher, um, but you could also do that when you're uh, giving presentations at, at conferences. So the share button at the top, you'll see there's a few different ways that you can share that. One is with the link, so it'll copy this link at the top. Um, the other is a QR code. So if I click that, it's going to give you a QR code, and you can put this in your presentations at conferences, and anyone in the audience is able to follow that. So this is a really important feature that we're really excited about um, in, in Open Alice. And I will just show you as an example a complex query that someone sent me. I'm just going to open a new tab and paste the, the link that they sent me. It's going to take a second because this one's a little bit more complex. But you'll see now it's bringing it up. So we've got six different filters here, um, a set of 15 different institutions. These are the largest uh, research institutions in Canada, so the U15 we call them. Total number of authors less than 10. So often people will do this when they're looking at collaborative intelligence because some publications have thousands of authors and it doesn't necessarily mean that the institutions have, have collaborations. So less than 10 authors, you can see over here we've got they're working with authors in Germany on biology since the year 2010. And then a couple of things here on paratext and, and other. So I'll just quickly say that this is a complex query that someone built that I was able to, to send and share. And you'll see here, you also have the API call. So if you're working with someone who is going to use this information in APIs, it, it's all updating at the same time. So for any analysis that you can do, you can click API and copy and paste that call for the analysis that you've built. So that was just an example of something complex you can do. I'll go back and, and maybe walk through how you can get there. So up here, you see I've got two different filters. Um, for now, let's, let's go ahead and get rid of these. Uh, I'm gonna cross out of the, the university one and cross out of the 
sustainable development goal. So right now I've got no filters applied and you can see we've got the 200, almost 250 million works in open colors. So if you wanna add a filter, you can, like you did at the beginning, go up to search and let's say, um, for instance, let's do Kyle Demas. This will bring up my, essentially all the publications that I've authored. And if I click on Kyle Demas here, you'll see my author ID in Open Alex. You'll see uh, the alternate names that I've published on. And if you click this I button, it's gonna bring up essentially an author profile with information about me. So I'm gonna go back for now. Um, but let's say I, I added Kyle Demas that way and I mentioned I'm from University of South Florida. So maybe I'll do that, University of South Florida. Now, when I click this, it's gonna bring up all of the publications where I was, I used University of South Florida as an affiliation. This is only one, this is my undergraduate thesis, but now you're able to see how I just typed all of this in the magic box, essentially. For any of these though, you can also navigate through the filters. So if you click this plus sign, the most common filters here pop up. So search an institution, an author, search text within title abstract and text of the document, whether something's open access, but you can search many other metadata fields by clicking this more button. So let's say you wanna search in the Microsoft Academic um, Graph Concepts. So I'm gonna do that here. You could search for instance for, um, I study seaweed. So let's see if there's anything that has to do with kelp. Oops. So there's two concepts in here, one that's kelp and one that's kelp forest. So I'm gonna click that and you'll see now it's created a new filter up here that has just the works that match that concept. So you can keep adding in here, but maybe I'll do something a little more complex. And uh, Let's say I wanna look at the institution uh, country. So kelp forest publications in Chile. You can see there's 141 that, that match that. But another thing that you could do for any of these, right now these are combining with and, so publications that are on kelp forest and are published by authors in Chile. But you could click on this and negate this filter. And what that will do is say, give me all the publications from Chile that are not on Kelp Forks. Now that particular use case might not be very interesting to you, but you could do that um, with all sorts of other things. So I'll give you an example. Under work type, as I said, we have many different work types in here. One of these is called paratext. Paratext, if you're not familiar with it, is essentially anything in a journal that is in between the actual articles that you're interested in. And sometimes folks do want to search paratext because if you have a cover image or something like that, you're able to search it. But if you want to exclude that from all analyses, you can select paratext and then click negate. And this is giving me all of the works from Chile that are not um, that paratext type. But let's say you have something that's a little more complex and you want to know not just um, Chile, but let's say you want to add, oops, um, let's say I want to add here another country, like Chile's collaboration, oops, I don't know if I clicked out of here, Chile's collaborations with Brazil. Now you'll see it's combining publications that have an author from Chile and an author from Brazil, and it's using the and feature. That's the default here because most of the times people are looking for and, but if you click that and sign, you can also get or. So now you're looking at all the publications from Chile or Brazil. So this is the type of, this is how you can start building these in a really complex way. Um, sometimes people will do this with institutions as well. So I'll pick another one, Simon Fraser University. It's the one I'm most closely located to, so it's fresh in mind. Um, and let's say I wanted to know all of their collaborations with the University of British Columbia. If I click on that here, you'll see it's combining up here with AND. So now these are all the publications where people at those two universities are collaborating. And you'll see on the report, it's got the same six widgets that I had kept originally. But if you don't want those anymore, you can restore the default reports to just go back to those original four. But the nice part about this is that you can design this how you want it and then be able to send this URL to, to anyone who, who wants to be able to, to look at your analyses. So the last thing I'll say is that we've started developing this tab feature, and this is very new, but let's, let's say here I've created this one for the demo, so I'll call it a demo for now. 
Um, but then I want to start a new tab. And this is going to be a blank slate to start doing all of these analyses again. The reason we're building this feature is because we're hearing from folks all over the world that it would be really great to have saved searches and the ability to set up alerts. And you can do a saved search right now by just bookmarking this URL, and you could um, go visit that whenever you wanted. But we're building in this feature so that you can save searches in here, and then you'll be able to also set a search alert so that you can get updates when there's new publications to them. So I hope this was a helpful high-level walkthrough of the new user interface. We're going to be setting up these quick hit tutorials that have videos answering very specific questions, like how do I find a particular journal? Um, so if you do have questions, please feel free to reach out and we'll create videos for that. All right, hope you enjoy Open Alex.